Abby. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Well, it's good. And uh, are you okay? I mean, uh, you, you're not allowed to go to school? Uh, yes, I'm great. It's been great. I've been snorkeling with my dad, and I've been getting diving certified. I've been working on getting diving certified. You've been diving? I've been working on getting certified. Yay! Next time we'll dive together. Yay! Sounds like a lot of fun. No, I look forward to it. I would like to ask you a couple questions. Sure. So, my first one I would like to say was, why are whales so special to learn and research about? Your first question was? Why are whales so special to learn and research about? The whales? Yes. The whales are critical because they're at the end of the food chain. And uh, when you look at the whole history of life in the ocean, it starts with plants and animals, the phytoplankton and zooplankton, and it goes up the food chain, it's feeding different species, and then it goes up all the way to the bigger and the bigger and the bigger. And then it happens that marine mammals, dolphins and whales, at the end of the food chain, they feed on everything they can, and they have warm blooded like you and I, yes. and uh, they think they have a very sophisticated communication system. Uh, different groups of whales or dolphins can uh, identify each other or isolate themselves from each other. And they really love to uh, either connect with some and uh, have fun with them eventually or not. Now, when it comes to Hawaii, where you are, um, the the humpback whales are coming there because traditionally they've always done there because it's a nice place where they could come and the mother or the females can give birth. It's the perfect environment. But let's not forget that uh, in as much as they're giving birth and they take care of their baby and they feed them, they don't eat. So they're losing weight as uh, the time goes on and as they span to take care of the best possible environment uh, to their children, uh, they're losing a lot of weight and uh, there's a point where it's time for them to move going back north where all the way up to Alaska, they're gonna find the food that they need in order to regain weight and continue to take care of their uh, babies or whales, if you want to call it that way. And uh, it's fascinating because a mother and her baby will stay together for a very, very long time because the baby is in love with his mom. And uh, same thing with dolphins. Uh, the orcas, for example, which you can find from the Arctic all the way down to the Antarctic, have a brain which is bigger than ours. Yeah. And it appears that their sophistication is pretty much as good as ours. So, or maybe better, who knows? So it's absolutely fascinating to make sure we protect these creatures which are at the end of the food chain and depend on the quality of the environment and what they find in the environment. Uh, for them to be able to give birth, take care of their young, and so on. And that's why I'm so glad that now uh, this whole region where you are is being protected uh, from people who originally were catching the whales uh, to uh, most of the time waste most of it, but also eat some of it. And uh, that needs to stop because we're taking more the nature can produce. Let's keep in mind that every species is the capital. And uh, they produce interests. You can take the interests, but you cannot touch the capital. And that's why these whales coming to you are critical to be protected. And we're doing, or you doing, a very good job to make that happen. And to have a young person like you asking that question 
to me is very rewarding because it's telling me, yes, we're going to make it. We're going to do the right thing for the future of our species. Thank you so much. I would love to save the whales because they are also important. Um, my next question is, can research about whales and sea life improve our future? By, absolutely, because by knowing uh, where they go, what they do, where they travel, the quality of the environment in which they live, what they eat, when they eat, what they feed on, all of that is absolutely critical for us to understand because they are in the ocean, probably thousands and maybe tens of thousands of species that we don't know because we've only explored maybe 8% of the ocean, which is 70% of the planet. And uh, we don't know what's down there deep. And every time somebody goes down, uh, let's say to a thousand feet or deeper, oh, there are new species. And I can tell you, even in an environment like the tropical environment around the place where you live, there are species that are being discovered by the scientific community on a regular basis, whether they are animals or plants. Uh, it's uh, very important for us to know because every one of them is helping the others or are uh, part of the system that we all depend upon. And uh, it's uh, very, very critical. And thanks to Understanding the whole system of marine mammals, it's helping us understand more. And you know, some of these whales are going very deep and they can stay down there for quite a while. So I, uh, and I have not done it yet, but I'm now certified to go down to a thousand feet in the exosuit, which was created by Phil Newton up in uh, uh, Canada, Vancouver. And uh, now people can go down with that. He certified me. It takes five days to learn uh, to go down to a thousand feet. And I'm looking forward to that. Not to go deeper than I was going in the past. It's to find new species we have never seen before. And I'm fascinated. So that will help me and connect with the life of marine mammals and whales in order for making sure we understand what they depend upon, what they need to continue being there for centuries to come. And uh, they are amazing creatures. And uh, I wish I could speak their language sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, every species has different uh, languages. And uh, for me, it's very difficult. But uh, there are some scientists who understand a little bit of what they are saying when they make noise. And right where you are, sometimes they make a lot of noise, which is fascinating to me. I would love to speak their language. Um, and thank you so much for all of that. Um, my last question is, how can ordinary people save the whales and their environment, even if they do not live near the ocean? Well, you're right, and that's a very important question because a lot of people live away from the ocean. There are even a lot of people who have never seen the ocean. But uh, there are now what I call the communication revolution, where every human being on the planet is connected to each other with a cell phone, a computer, and so on. And we can communicate, particularly to the teachers and to the young people, all the information about the uh, life support system in the ocean and how it goes from the plants and animals which are microscopic all the way to the big the biggest creature uh, which are the whales and dolphins and uh, the people are always fascinated when i go away from the ocean and i share with them the stories that i've experienced and i show them images of the films that I've had the pleasure with my colleagues uh, and my children and so on to film for the last uh, September. Maybe I'll be with you in September to celebrate 75 years of scuba diving. 
That's a lot of years. I started when my father put the tank on my back. He had co-invented the equipment and he pushed me overboard and I became a scuba diver right away. At the time, there were no uh, certification. There was no uh, way to uh, dive. Uh, even at my age, I was seven years old. My brother was four and a half and uh, there was no regulation in those times. Now there are regulations and I'm glad they are. And uh, it's very important, but uh, I want to celebrate 75 years of scuba diving and I'd love to do it in Hawaii, uh, right where you are. And uh, to do it because uh, I want to live to be 107 in order to celebrate 100 years of scuba diving, in order to share with people and you particularly uh, the importance of the ocean and what lives in the ocean and around where you live and how you can share that privilege that we have when we're near, near the ocean to share it with the people who cannot be there. And uh, you can help that uh, very, very much so by communicating out there. Follow your dreams is very important. I don't know what your dreams are, but follow your dreams and you will do all the exciting things that can be done when you're young. And uh, if there's anything we can do to help, we'll be glad to do it. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed all of that. Well, you're very kind. And remember, uh, when my father was in, co-invented the diving equipment and he was telling me when I was your age, uh, people protect what they love and uh, wanted to learn why, why should I love, protect them? And, and I learned, and um, that's when I created Ocean Future Society uh, after he passed away to honor his philosophy. And I created uh, our mission, which is, and that's a mission that fits perfect where you are. If you protect the ocean, you protect yourself. So I wish you well. And if there are more questions in the future, don't hesitate. I'm available and I'll do anything I can to help you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Abby. A bientôt. See you soon. It's going. Yeah. Well, thank you, Abby. I wish you the best in your life. Thank you so much. You're welcome.